Good evening and welcome to Metro Focus. I'm Rafael P. Roman. For decades, talk of the Second Avenue subway seemed to be just that, talk. But that changed when the MTA broke ground in 2007, and then again two years ago when the authority, with a nudge from Governor Cuomo, opened three new stations on Manhattan's Upper East Side. And the transit agency is not planning to stop there either. As part of the next phase of the multi-billion dollar project, the subway is supposed to head further up Second Avenue through East Harlem to 125th Street. Those plans, however, could potentially put hundreds of workers out of a job and displace dozens of tenants. The city, the new nonprofit independent news outlet, recently took a closer look at that possibility in a piece titled Imminent Domain, Uncertain Second Avenue Subway Plans Put Locals on Edge. Rachel Holliday-Smith is the reporter who wrote that story, and she joins us now. Rachel, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. So, Rachel, in that article you write that according to MTA plans, the second phase of the subway expansion should be done by 2029. How realistic is that? I see you I think laughing that's already. A bit of a yeah. tough sell. That's according to their most recent plan for a design for the three stations in East Harlem, but that would require them to start work by the end of this year. Yeah. That's probably going to be pretty tough for them to hit, but that's the idea. 2029 is when we're going to see this. Right. So that's unrealistic, but we were talking just before we got here. The likelihood is, unless something happens unexpected, that this expansion will happen. I think that's safe to say, um, unless there was some catastrophic funding issue, which in the Trump administration era, that could happen. Yeah. But I think that the MTA is very serious about making this happen. And also, I should mention, this is the second phase. Yeah. There's a three and four that goes all the way down to yeah. two. So. And, we'll, and we'll try to talk about that if we have time. But can you explain in some detail mm -hmm. what this expansion is planning to build? Yes, of course. So folks are probably familiar with the stations up to 96th Street right now. This would add Q train stops on 106, 116th, and then it would curve over to Lexington Avenue and 125th, where the uh, Metro North stop is now. You took a close look yeah. at the number of people who could be out of a job as a result of this expansion, and people who could be out of a home because Correct. they'd be out of their apartment. What are the numbers? Yeah, the numbers are pretty staggering, and they're quite a bit more than the first phase. There were some eminent domain cases there, but it's looking like more than 500 workers may be displaced, meaning the buildings that they're in now where they work will be replaced by what I said before, entrances, exits, ventilation. And then we've got 140 tenants who the MTA has identified live in these same areas or buildings or properties. I should say, those are pretty big numbers, but the MTA will say that those may be tweaked slightly. This is a likely plan that they have. They yeah. have identified these properties. There is not a final design yet for the whole project, but this is a environmental assessment that was yeah. approved last fall by the feds. As I was talking to people in the neighborhood, a lot of people who didn't get into the story themselves, they were saying, oh, my bodega is going to be gone. You know, yeah. oh, this is going to be right here on my block or around the corner. Yeah. And businesses across the street from these locations are very concerned. People on 125th who, you know, do quality of life, they're really pretty concerned about where this is going to go. So the people who may be affected by the second mm -hmm. phase, how do they feel about how the MTA has dealt with the process? Yeah, um, I would say like overall they're pretty upset and they feel a bit in the dark, especially when it comes to the tenants, uh, the commercial tenants, people who own businesses, people who are apartment dwellers, renters, um, because they really haven't been given any official notification about the possibility that they, you know, their building will be replaced. The property owners have I've talked to a couple of them who got letters from the MTA that said, hey, this is a possibility. That was sometime last year. But overall, you know, they know about the project generally, sort of in a long lens view, but they don't have good information about how they can plan for a lease coming up in two years, whether they oh. should sign or yeah. not, or if they should, you know, try to sell their business and get out, or there's just no way to know what's going to happen. But hasn't the MTA opened up an information center, so to speak, on 125th Street? Anybody who has questions, they can go there? Yes, and I will say that some of the folks who heard rumors about this and they didn't know what to do before I spoke to them, they did go to that 125th Street storefront, and I, the MTA has told me that they opened up that storefront because in the first phase, there wasn't a place that people could get readily accessible information about what's going to happen in on mm. Second Ave in the Upper East Side. So they said, hey, we're just going to open this from the very beginning. You can walk in, you can get as much information as you can. But unfortunately, 
you can get a lot of information about what engineering is going to yeah. go on and the digging and the general timeline. But in terms of Not hey, about their particular building, right. their Are particular we apartment, take your building and yeah. replace it with a ventilation shaft. That <laughs> they can't yeah, say yeah. that yet. So, what kind of compensation is there is there for? businesses or property owners who have to give up their property to the MTA? And is there any compensation for tenants who may lose their apartment? Very, very generally, and I don't know the specifics on that point, but um, their eminent domain law does protect the property owners. They will get compensated. They will get paid out by the MTA. And then the tenants, it, it's tricky because commercial tenants, if you own a business, mm -hmm. you'll have a little bit more of a right to get some compensation for the, you know, the disruption of your business and how much that, that's worth. An attorney who works on eminent domain issues who actually represented folks in the Upper East Side said that residential tenants have very little claim to mm -hmm. get any compensation. It's gonna be rough for, for those apartment dwellers who are in that area. They just get relocation costs, the, and the MTA helps them relocate. But and, really... and quickly, I think this might be the last question. Did you speak to anyone who thought this was a great idea? Huh. <laughs> That's a good question. Not unequivocally, nobody was like, yes, I'm, <laughs> this is great, but also they're gonna take my building. But there were people, even people in those buildings, who said, this is really bad for me, this is gonna really disrupt my life, but I get that this is a good thing for East Harlem overall, in the long mm -hmm. run, because it is a transit-starved neighborhood, yeah. and it has been for years and years, generations. So what does the MTA say that, that will happen positively to this area as a result right. of this? They, they say those same things. They say, yeah. this is something that we've been working on for literally generations. Mm. They really want to bring it as soon as possible to East Harlem. But they, you know, they do acknowledge that it will negatively affect, yeah. you know, these people in these buildings and the surrounding areas, but they try to s stick to the positive. All right, Rachel, this is a continuing story, obviously, and we'll bring you back to give us updates. Thank All you right. so much for joining us. Thank you.